Hype City Show. We are in the building. We got a special one tonight. But before we get started, I need everybody to go follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Hype City Show, H-Y-P-E-C-I-T-Y-S-H-O-W. But I'm in here. I'm in Philly. I'm with my man, Sky Man. I've been rocking with him since I started. You know, he's been doing this clothing thing for a long time. We at the Art History Store. Let's welcome JP to the show, yes. man, you know. My man. My man, what's going on, brother? My man, thank you for stopping through. Let Definitely. everybody know we in Northeast Northeast Philly. Philly. Northeast Look, Philly. Yeah. Let's get it right. <laughs> Northeast Philly, we I'm up here. Northeast Philly. Right, right, yeah, I got man. you. So I like, got you. You can't see from the camera, but right down the street is Frankfurt and Cotman. Okay, Frankfurt okay. and Cotman is legendary because when all the Philly sports teams win, right. They celebrate at Frankfurt and Cotman, which is okay. right down the next corner. Man, you put me on something. Yeah, now yeah. I know why when the Eagles was going to the bowl, they showed here yeah. first. And that, see, I never, I thought it was always downtown, <laughs> Center City. See, yeah. you put me on this, something. This is where the diehard Philly people come from. You know, okay, man. Okay. I know that other parts of this city would argue that, but right. I'm Northeast Philly. You know they're going to you know like, yeah. look at this and be like, "Oh, he tripping right yeah. now." It's like, but how you been though, man? Fantastic. 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 Yeah, I got nothing to complain about. Definitely. The store looks super great, man. You got dope hoodies, got hats, got the t-shirts, as you know, as you usually do, man. It looks good in here, bro. Absolutely. Put a lot of hard work into getting this back where it needed to be. Right, right. So for the people that don't know who you are, yeah. just give a little rundown on right. what you, you know, what this what Listen, this is about. You might not know who I am, but you've definitely seen my work before. Right. So some of the most legendary stuff that I did, I did the Pink Panther that Bum B is wearing in Beyonce Check Up On a video. Right. Uh, I actually, we did Bum B's um, draped up and dripped, dripped out, out video. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I got a bunch of shirts in that. I got a cameo in that. And then um, a bunch of stuff for Soldier Boy when he first came out. So I did the Superman hoodies wearing and crank that. Right. And then he wore uh, my designs and kissed me through the phone. Okay. Um, she got a dunk, turned my swag on, like a right. bunch of stuff like yeah. that. So he was um, rocking with you heavy. Yes, but also <laughs> like you know I'm from Philly, so we had a bunch of Philly people rocking our stuff. Um, Gilly and Wallow, right? You know, Gilly, uh, a bunch of videos. He's rocking my designs and then uh, his movie Blood Brother. Okay, he got a bunch of art history stuff on and that. So like you've definitely seen my stuff before. Right. They just didn't know. They're like, well, I see this H all the time, <laughs> yes. the star H, but who is this guy? Yes, yes. I, l let me uh, not forget this. We were talking this off camera. Right. Philly sports players like Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos, and Deshaun Jackson. Right. The um, Eagles coach. And then the Eagles coach, Nick, Nick Sirianni, Sirianni, been rocking with us heavy. So. Right, right. Salute to you guys. Now, I mean, you know, y'all are, are wearing my man's stuff here. How does that make you feel? Oh, it's a good feeling. So... As an artist, you just want like the recognition or like right. some type of reaction from people. You just want to get some type of something out of all the hard work that you put into the art. Right, right. So to be honest with you, it's great to be able to say all these people's names have rocked our stuff. But like as I'm driving around the city and I see people rocking my gear or like yeah, you yeah. came in, you're like, yo, I see your shirts everywhere. Right, like, right. Man, that feels just as good. Right. So. That's dope, though, because, you know, I know you're, like, probably watching, you know, you watch crazy sports, you know, you're a sports guy, and uh, when you see these guys wearing your stuff, you're probably like, yo, that's that's wild, that, that's crazy. I, I, I put in mad hours to make that shirt, now, you know what I mean, the world is getting, it's like yeah. free promo for you, kind of, like, you know what yeah. I mean, and, and people don't kind of get that, like, a lot. Yeah, but also, it's like, I... I, I put so much work and effort into it that, like, I just knew that that was going to happen. happen. You're like, yo, I know this joint's going to be hot. Yep. They're going to wear it anyway. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> the confidence that goes behind but, it. Hey, man, you, you, you stand on your, your product, though. Absolutely. That's what you pose to. Absolutely. Now, how, how does the shirts, like, get created? What's the create, the, you know, how do you create these, these concept of shirts? Because, you know, you got... It's a Philly thing, you know what I mean? Uh, I seen you got some WrestleMania joint about to come <laughs> out. You got uh, Tupac on yeah, some, yeah. Chucky. Like, what is, like, how do you come with these ideas? Well, some of the stuff that you're mentioning is just from 
the customer influence. Okay. From like what my people are saying, like, yo, right. we need you to do this. Okay. So like, it's a Philly thing. We had such a request that like, yo, we want an art history. It's a Philly thing. You know what I mean? So we put that out and, uh, oh man, it was crazy when we first dropped that, man. Like, uh, store was flooded with customers online and orders right. coming in, blah, blah. So like, that was a super hot release that, for us but that was customer influence everything else like i can't even explain the creative process because a lot of the times it happens to me when i'm not thinking i'm in the car right i get an idea i'm like you know on a on a jog or at the gym or yeah. like it, it the ideas always come when i'm not thinking if that even makes sense okay they just pop up and you're like, you know what? Yeah, we gonna run, we gonna try. Is it like, is it a, is it a lot of ideas or is it like, all right, we're just gonna run with that? Is it like, that's it? We just going with that? Or do you say, do you talk to somebody? Nah, you know when it's, you know when you got some. You just say yeah. I'm yeah. Right now, how long does usually it take you to make these shirts from like so start like the thing to is is that there's some designs in here that I designed in ten to twenty minutes, and then there's other ones that took me three days and then three months later I revisited it and right. sat back on it for three days. So it could take it could take ten minutes but it could take a couple of days. And know? these are all hand drawn. Yeah, most of them. Yeah. How long you been doing this art thing like for, you know? Yo, this summer will be twenty years since I made my first T shirt. Twenty years since you made your first T shirt. And yep, when you the probably summer of two thousand three. And when you probably made your first t-shirt, did you ever think, man, 20 years later, I'll still be doing this? Never. If somebody told you, like, yo, 20 years, man, you're still going to be doing this, <laughs> would you have said, man, you, what are you on, bro? <laughs> nah, I don't know. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see this 20 years ago, but like I said, even where I was at two years ago to now, right, I, right. I, I, I didn't see that. Right. Um, I know that this is my passion. Okay. I always feel like that this was the life that, like chose me right because when i first made my first shirt 20 years ago is a rest in peace shirt okay i wore it out before my it was one for my friend that passed away i wore the shirt out before his funeral and everyone said where'd you get the shirt from and when they found out i made it they were like yo make us all shirts right so i went to the corner store bought you know 25 dollar black t-shirts or whatever i started painting them up in my room the next day everybody wanted them and I remember saying to my mom, yo, I think I'm on to something. <laughs> nah, man. What'd your mom say? She encouraged it. She she always had my back. Um, we actually, she went with me. We signed up for fashion design school. So within like six months, a year after that funeral, like I was going to fashion design school. Right. Because she wasn't basically like, you sure you want to do that? Or like, she was like, nah. Nah, I think that she always wanted me to pursue my idea. Cause you know, sometimes yeah, cause you know, sometimes like sometimes parents they'd be like, "Cool, yeah, that's dope, you do that, but how is that gonna do long term?" You know what I mean? Yo, I want to tell this story that when I was 13 years old, I got locked up for graffiti. Right. right? They actually didn't catch me in the act. That I, someone told on me. Okay. Right? But I got arrested for graffiti. Right? right. So they took me down to the youth study center. My mom had to come down. We had court. My mom went in front of the judge saying, like, I'm not leaving without him. He's a good kid, blah, blah, right? So after court, my mom took me bowling, right? <laughs> Anybody else would be like, it's Yeah, trouble, yeah, you know right. You going home. I thought that, you know, I was going to be in trouble, bro. Right, you know right. What I mean? So my mom takes me bowling. I say to her, why would you take me bowling? I thought that I'd be grounded. You know, my mom beat me, whatever. You know yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, nah, you... You just got to find something more positive to put your energy into. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like when I found the shirt thing, I think that... Uh, she was like, you know what? Yeah, we going to run with this. You already got caught drawing on the walls <laughs> out here, so we might as well, you might as well do something for drawing on the shirt. You know what I mean? That's dope, though. That's dope. That's super dope. Yeah. So two years ago... It's almost, yeah, almost yeah. about two years ago. March, yeah, yeah. March of 2001. March right. So two years ago... Um, I remember watching the news and uh, and I seen something and I was like, yo, what? I was like, there's no way. Yeah. And um, you had a, a store fire. Yeah, store burned down to the ground. We lost everything. It's crazy. Um, talk a little bit about that. How how was how was you feeling when you got that call? That's probably like the you know uh, a business owner's worst nightmare. 
You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. damn, are you serious? Like, how was, what was that called like when you got it? Yo, I could remember this day in my head so vividly. So at the time, like, you know, COVID hit in March of 2020. Right. They shut down the gym, churches, blah, yeah, blah, blah, all, all, the, all the things that I do, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so um, a year later, March 5th of 2021 is when we had the fire. And we were actually celebrating our 11-year anniversary here at the store that weekend. Okay. So at the time, I was waking up real early in the morning, like 4 o'clock in the morning. I would go to the gym and right. start my day and then I go to work I make time for my son blah blah and then you know I wouldn't go to bed until like say 10 10 10 30 at night time I would I was, it was a very right. long day for right, me right right you start early you yeah. end it you know what so man the, the um the day of the fire I was at the gym at 5 15 somebody calls me and the person that called me had never ever called me before so it was like to get a phone call at 5 a.m I pick it up it's right like, I, Tommy, what's going on? He said, yo, your store's on fire. I'm like, you sure? And he's like, yeah, I work for a restoration company. I'm standing outside. I could see the flames right now. And Jeez. I was at the gym down the street, and I could see fire engines and cop cars flying down the street. So I ran out the gym. I drove up here real quick, and by the time I was here, the fire department had smashed the windows, and they were in here. They were hosing it down, but it was already gone at that point. Damn, that's so crazy. So the thing is, this happened 5.15, and at 5.30, 6 o'clock, every news station here in Philadelphia had yeah. breaking news. <laughs> right, breaking right. News, breaking news, fire in Northeast Philly, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, right? And because of social media, right, my phone was just nonstop. Like, literally every two seconds, message, message, message. And you know what? This is, I'll never forget, I'll never forgive the people for this, right? Right, right. Even at 9, 10 o'clock, the store had been on fire for a couple hours, right? People were hitting me up saying, yo, Jay, you know your store on fire? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, bro, yeah, I've been new to this. Yeah. You're like five hours late on this <laughs> yeah. joint. I'm the first one they notified, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, uh, bro, it was devastating. We lost everything in that fire. Um, but like when something like that happens, you start to realize who's like really, real. really with you, yeah, yeah and, and yeah, really, man. and you know, your this neighborhood probably, you know, kind of yeah, rally so behind like, you, and yeah. you know, because it's been in the neighborhood, like and you're from here, you know what I mean? So yeah. why not help the, the the kid from the neighborhood get yeah. right? So you know what's crazy is that I've always been the person that helped, right? right. I donated. I like yeah. gave. I, I you give to, back. You, yeah, you do I what you're supposed to do. I try to do as much as I could to help people, right? But I was never in the position where I needed that, right? You know what I mean? And the first day, I didn't even want any. I I, I didn't want to feel like a charity case. So like, yeah. I will tell people like, like nah, nah, we man, gonna we gonna get it on our own. <laughs> we gonna get it off the muscle. I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. So um, the shirt that you're wearing right there was the first shirt that we put out. So we were able to get equipment. We put it in the basement in my house and we started, we got back to work literally like the next day. Right. So we put out that shirt. That ha that shirt came out two weeks after the fire. And on the first day, we sold over 600 shirts. That's good, man. Yep. Yeah, and then that just, that gave us so much motivation to right. like just, just go after it. Now, how long was this down? Nine months. Nine months. So you were in here or you had contractors come in or... I don't own this building. So, oh, like, so they had to. They, so they, you was waiting on somebody yeah. else. So Yo, you know what's so crazy about ownership? Because I know ownership has been like a big talk in the industry, right? Right, right. I don't own the store. I've been a renter at the time of the fire 11 years. Now 13. Right. But after the fire happened, I didn't know this, but the fire actually just broke my lease. Like, legally, it just terminated the lease, which I didn't know. Oh, man. That's so, crazy. So after they built this all up real nice, they yeah. put a for rent sign in the window, and there was a bidding war for us to, like, get back in. So other people was trying to take this spot. <laughs> yes. Yo, that's wild, bro. <laughs> yes. I'd have been like, yo, y'all tripping. I've been, you know this was mine. Like, yeah. I've been here. Well, here's my thing is that this is my home, and, like, we actually looked at different locations right. after the fire. Are we okay. going to stay here? Are we going to move? This and other thing. We looked all over, but this just feels like right. home. You, this is where you started at. Yeah. So it you're just like, feels I can't. like home. Will there ever be another second? Will there be a second location? Or yeah. mo will, like I know this is the flagship store. Will mm -hmm. there be like another store here, another store there? Have has that talk? 
Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And okay. that's all in motion right now. Okay. And um, we was talking off air, you know, you got this truck, like a van or, you know, yeah. this big van that you ride out to events. He do events, so he pop up. You already know yeah. he's pulling up with the art history stuff. Yeah. So you're a big music guy. So what did the music artists got? They got the tour tour right. bus, right? Right, right. So we got the store bus. Right. Right. So it's literally just a store on wheels. We took an old SWAT command center. Right. And converted it into a store on wheels. Okay. So the concept behind it was everywhere we go and do pop up shops we would sell like crazy and people would love the merch. Right. So we're like, all right, well, if we could take the show on the road, how are we going to do it? So we literally converted the back of this truck into a store that looks pretty identical to what you see in here right now. Okay. So you could actually, we open up the back doors, you could, got steps, you could and walk, walk onto the truck and just shop right off the truck. Okay. And it's stock just like here. It's just brand new just like this, yeah. Okay. And how's that, how's that work for, you know, uh, events like, is it like a weekend thing? Is it just like, is it just different festivals? How do, how do you pick these things? So there are certain events that we wanted to be a part of. We reached out, but what has happened, we've made such a good name for ourselves and such a good vendor to be at places. Right, right, you know? right. So like now um, we get invited places all the time. Like people always say like, yo, we want you at our event. Okay. Um, and since we have such a loyal following right. that a lot of people want to attach their name with us, we cross promote festivals, events, stuff like that. It yeah, just yeah. makes it so much better, you know? Definitely, definitely. And I love to do that. I love to be out like selling the merch and being around the people. Because you meet and, and, and meeting the people is probably a plus for you because you're like, yo, I, f I can get to actually meet the people that's wearing my clothes mm -hmm. and I can shake their hand. They can say, oh, shit. Yo, I, this is the dude. I know this guy now. So, you know, because a lot of people, they, they don't have a face to their brand. Nobody knows who the guy is. Or Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, I want to ask you this. We was talking about, you know, you, you uh, sports people wore, wear your stuff yeah. and things like that. Why is it that you yourself and they make the same shirts you make in these places, but they don't ever get they don't ever say here. They already wearing my man's stuff. Why don't we just give him a little deal and he can make it be the official people for the sports team? You got hockey players. Mm -hmm. I done seen some of the Flyers wearing your joints, Phillies, Eagles, Sixers. Mm -hmm. Everybody sports-wise and that is known wears your stuff and it's like, yo, why these these organizations don't say, yo, you're a kid from the city, your store's here, you've been doing all this stuff. Why don't they give you the, you know what I mean, throw yeah. you the ball? I don't know. I think that we should all reach out to them and ask them. Right. Because I mean, you know what's crazy? I, rem <laughs> I they I seen like they make shirts just like yours. Yeah. And then try to put, you know, their little... But yeah, so, um, you know, I've been making shirts for 20 years. And um, I've built a name and a reputation for myself. And we've seen people bootleg our stuff, copy our ideas, stuff like that. And, um, you know... When I was younger or even a couple years ago, not having the knowledge and life experience that I have now. Right. It used to get under my skin so bad that like yeah. people like, would Man, just steal they the stealing idea. my stuff. Dude. But now I just look at it totally different because I love the fact that I inspire. Right. And the second thing is that like I love the fact that people look at me like, yo, that's that dope. Right. That and I'm I gotta copy. take it. Right. Yeah. You know, and people so probably like, tell him, yo, that ain't, that ain't the original. We know the original. You know <laughs> well, I mean? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, is that uh, some people, you know, it's funny because we have such a loyal following that anybody that, like, copies, people will just start reaching out to us and be like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or copy right. it or blah, blah, they, blah, They'll put them on blast. You got, like, loyal fans out here yeah. that'd be like, yo, y'all y'all can't, can't boot, like, the brand like that. <laughs> yeah, but listen, my whole goal and dream is to collab with every major you know, sports team in the city, all the big influencers and work with all the big companies because we are Philly's authentic streetwear. Right. And, you know, they got to They got to work with you, you know, plus you making all this dope stuff that they're already wearing. So they might as well just make it official. <laughs> like, for real, I don't I, I don't get that. But you had a little beef with a writer. Oh, yeah. So recently. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this is like, back when the Eagles were in the playoffs. Right. 
You said and, your shirts was kind of like weak. Yeah, so the head coach, Nick Sirianni, was seen wearing one of our shirts. Right. And um, I guess this guy, I don't know, for whatever reason, just like picked it out and was like, Nick Sirianni got to start saying no to these shirts. Right. So he tweeted, and they got like a nice little following here in the city, and they posted up just saying like, if the Eagles are to lose, it's because Nick Sirianni's wearing the shirt. shirt. So I typically ignore stuff like that, right? right? But since of our following and their following, people were texting me and messaging me all day like, yo, did you see this? Yeah, Yeah. they're tagging me on it and everything, and I'm ignoring it. Right. And... Right before I hit, right before I hit the pillow at nighttime, one of my good friends sent me that tweet that said, "Like if the Eagles lose, it's because Sirianni's right, right. wearing this shirt." So I don't know. I guess the next morning I woke up and I just thought to myself, "All right, well let's make a bet." Right. So I made a video saying, "Look, I seen your little blog post about Sirianni wearing the shirt." So I was like, "If the Eagles lose." I'll donate 500 towards whatever charity right. of your you picking, yeah. right? But if they win, you got to wear the shirt, take a picture, and make a post. Right. You know what I mean? And, of course, the Eagles won. Right. <laughs> so. Did he? But did he hold up his end? He really didn't hold up his end. Like, he went on the website, bought a shirt, and just, like, screenshot it, just saying, like, look, I went and supported the business. So. Okay. That, that, that's fair. That's fair. But, you know, you, you, we, we wanted you to see see you in the shirt. Yo, though. the crazy thing is, is that that whole situation brought so much attention onto right. the store that that shirt became, like, the number, number one, one selling shirt. shirt at the time, and everyone wanted to support it. And probably when the Eagles were, like, winning all these games and you were, like, had these shirts... Like that was probably like a field day for you. Like you probably like, yo, they keep winning. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So like I said, Frankfurt and Common is right down the street. We're the right. closest like clothing store to the corner. Right. We've already dressed so many players, the coaches, blah blah. So like, the Phillies going into the World Series. Right. Was yeah, huge. that was a big too. Right? right. So like, we've had Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos wearing our stuff. Right. So, typically, the police would say, "Board up your store." No, 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 nobody's doing that. So yeah. the thing is, is that like we opened up during the ninth inning. Right. So when the Phillies won, within the first five minutes of them winning, everybody's running down to Frankfurt and Cotman, but people are stopping in here to grab merch real quick. I, I so like, Smart idea. Yeah. So within like the next couple of days, uh, we got reached out to all the news people reached out to us. Right. Action News, Fox News, CBS News, uh, you know, ABC yeah. News, bye bye. Everybody wanted to interview um, to say, like, yo, you got the players and coaches, and this is the store to go to. Word. So, um, and then, what, three months later, the Eagles, Eagles went to the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, so it was like good times, not man? Yeah. It's good time. What's next for JP, man? You got, you know, you got the store, you got your store bus. Um, you know, you've been doing this 20 years, like, what's next, man? So, the fire exposed everything I was doing wrong as a CEO slash business owner. Right. So, JP is great when it comes to creating, like, making the shirts yeah. and, like, all the all the fun stuff, I, I say, you know, like, even, like, social media, doing these right, right. interviews and stuff like that, but... I had never became the CEO that I always dreamed I would be. Right, you know right, right. So, like, my game has changed to being like, all right, I spent so much time designing and making clothes that I put aside the things that were important, which was, like, the back office stuff and growing the business. Right. So now that's what I want to master. Okay. I want to master becoming a CEO, growing this business into what I've always dreamed it to be. Okay. And like being outside of the store. So like I've spent so much time physically in and this yeah, store, yeah, yeah. making shirts, selling shirts, and doing all that stuff. So now um, I'm not in here as much. Right. And I'm just out in the world. I bet you people come in here and probably say, yo, he uh, he's still here? He still do this? Because they don't see you as much because they probably, yeah. you know, all those years leading up to this point, you was in here 24-7. Yep. You know what I mean? Behind the counter, somewhere in here, yes. they, can, they know where they find you. So in, in 
2023, we know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there, right? right? And a lot of people start off being good at something and then saying like, it's weird. We live in a world where it's just like, once you're good at some people, like, oh, you could sell it. You can make it a side hustle. Right. I just recently read something or, or listened to something that said like, in America, we don't have hobbies anymore. We just have side hustles. Right. Because everything that's like your hobby, if you're good at it, people are like, oh, you should right. turn, you into, turn a into a business. business. Yeah. So that's kind of like how I started 20 years ago. Like when I said I made them shirts for the funeral, everybody was like, oh, I like them. You should make them. We'll buy right. them, blah, blah, whatever, right? I never had experience of being a business owner. I've never had the knowledge of even going to school and taking a business right. class. It just, it just came so fast that you was just like, all right, I'm just, I'm going to learn as I go. Yep. And I'll be honest with you, it's like I live a life that I'm very comfortable and happy with. Right. You know what I mean? But you know it can be better. I know it can always get better. Right. Man. That's that's that, but that's that's good that you kinda like you got to this level where you're like, now I kinda understand. I gotta let me let me go back and get good at this part now. You well know one I mean? thing that people would never imagine that I ran the business for twenty years. We've been profitable every year except the year of the fire. Right. Because we had lost everything, right? And I did it with no business knowledge. I I never took a loan. Right. So I did this with zero, zero debt. Yeah. Right. You so start. like when I was go, I, I I went to like my business advisor. I went to my coach, and everybody's like, you know, what you did is, is it's very it's, hard. Right. To right. Because right. yeah, most like, people they like to get this. They got to get a loan to get this yeah. and all this stuff. And yes. you started and just. Look, I'm not trying to say how I did it is the right way. Right. It's just my blueprint. That's that, yeah, that's you know how I mean? you got on. Everybody's blueprint ain't the same, but this right. is how you got on. And there's the stories too. It's the same way, but you know, you that's how you got on, and now you're learning to be on the CEO side and get all that side right. Yeah. Because it's more to the business where you can make it even bigger than what it is now. Right. So like everybody looks at art history and says, why aren't they? doing collabs with all the major sports teams and stuff like that, you know? Like, we had uh, Eagles Hall of Famer Brian Westbrook here in October where we right. did a shirt with him. He came in, he did a meet and greet with the customers. It was just a great day for everyone involved. Right. And I just want to continue to do that. And it's not only athletes. I love I, I love everybody. Right, you know? right, right. Like, yeah, yeah. As long as you fit our company culture, like what we represent, if you represent that, I would love to do business with you. Right. You know? Why'd you ever stop doing the collabs with like, uh, you know, making other people's brand? Like, you know, when you like some rap guys come to you, yo, can you make some shirts? And then, the, you know, you was doing that for a minute. Why, why did. did that kind of, what cut that out? I didn't know how to say no. Right. I had to learn that lesson that it was like, when I first started Art History, I wanted everyone to have a shirt. And right. I wanted to do business with everybody. You're like, I'm trying but to like, flood this whole joint. Yeah. But everybody like, got And, and in the beginning, I was doing that, but I was working 24-7, and it, it didn't bring me happiness. Right. And I the thing is, is that what I was doing was helping other people build their brand up without and, getting <laughs> anything in return. Right. Without getting anything in return. The right. thing is, is that as long as it's a mutual business thing. Then it can work. Yeah, where we're both happy, we're both growing. You right. Know? Right. Um. Before we get out of here, what can you say to a up and coming business owner that wants to get into clothing, designing, all that stuff? I have a nephew, he's into, you know, he wants to get into fashion and all that stuff. What is, what is a couple tips you can give to somebody thinking about getting into this? Okay, so every day people hit me up and ask me for advice. Right. And I really don't have advice for people. What I say is this, like, we all know what we have to do inside. Mm -hmm. Your brain, your body, you know. Like, if you literally sit in a room and think to yourself, what do I have to do to get here? Right. right? Inside is going to tell you because when you're asking too many people for advice and too many people are involved, a lot of times you get steered so, off, right. off your Right, off of what path. you're trying to do. So my first, I, I, I say like, I guess like my first thing of advice would just be like, whatever your intuition is telling you, do that. But to me, I've noticed a lot of people want to do it because they see somebody else doing it. Right. And they think that person is living like a good life. They're happy, blah, right. blah. 
Because we have social media right. now, so you put all your pictures, right. make so it look my like first, you're doing it. My first piece of advice is be real with yourself and trust your intuition and listen to what your your brain is telling you what you have to do, right? right. Second thing, right? I went to fashion design school when I first started making shirts, Okay. right? In the first semester, they said in the fashion industry, and I, I don't know how true this is, but they did say this when I was in fashion design school, <laughs> right, right? Right, right, They were like, it's going to take 20 years in this industry for you guys to start like turning a profit. Okay. Right? And at the time that I'm 20 years old, I thought to myself, all right, well, by the time I'm 40, if as long as I'm making a million dollars a year, <laughs> I'm, like, cool. I'm cool. Yeah, because yeah, right. I, I looked at brands like Ralph Lauren. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and all these big brands and Gucci and blah, blah. Well, how many years they got in and all this other stuff. Right. And I said to myself, if I'm broke for 20 years, but in that 20th year, I'm making a million, million dollars, dollars, I'll do it. Right. So... I'm 20 years in come this summer since right. I first made the shirts, right, for that funeral. And I have had worked full-time jobs and did this even after I opened up the art history store. I so you was working a regular, jobs. like a, another job, not making shirts, like a regular job, and then still doing this. Yep. Hustling, man. Hustling, yep. bro. And, I, and I, I did that for a long time where I worked a full-time job and did this to where I didn't have much of... A life. Like a life. Right. But like I was on the ground, I knew where I wanted to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was focused. Yep. So in like the long that, run, basically. Yes. So like that's another reason why I don't like giving advice because they say when you give advice, you're talking to your younger self. Right. Right? Right. And like, I don't know, like, I, I think that everything that I did was what I had set out to do and I planned to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. I knew I wanted to make clothes for a living. So I was like, I went to fashion design school. I worked for a clothing company, Mesquite Originals, right? for yeah. four and a half years. And then I started my own. So come up with a plan and Execute. know that this is the end goal. And no matter how many times that it gets knocked off your path, you just st stay focused on the end goal. Right. Dope. That's dope. That's, that's good advice. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, you have to be focused on what you want to do. And, you know, we hit, like I said before, we have our good times and like, you know, you have your good months and you have your bad months where you're like, damn, this is a rough month right here. You know what I mean? But right, you so bounce back. What you're saying, right? I broke it down into this analogy. The 20 years I've been making shirts or even like the years that I've owned art history, it's been like a stock market ticker. Right. To where it goes up, it goes, it goes down, down, it goes, goes up, up, it goes down. In, in 2021, we had the fire. My joint crashed. <laughs> right. But here we are in 2023. Back I'm all up. the way back up, and right. I'm probably way further up now than I was even before, before the, fire. the fire. That's good. That's good, man. So let these people know where they can follow you, where they can get this good merch you online yeah. i know all that good stuff so man. you can find everything is art history 101 all one word um twitter instagram uh we're on tiktok facebook we're on everywhere the, everything and the, web, and, the, and the website arthistory101.com and then if you're in the united states we do free shipping okay last year we shipped to 49 states the only state that we didn't ship a package to is north dakota okay north so, dakota what's up <laughs> our history we yo y'all need them out there come on stop playing with it our history yeah i might have to take a flight out there. i know some philly people out in north dakota to go to school something it gotta be some pennsylvania people out there yeah. we gonna fix that what what you ship overseas you've been shipping overseas yeah Have we ship the, we ship overseas so like we get orders from canada and then we've got orders from a bunch of different places australia Damn. a bunch of places in europe okay so yeah international yep gotta get you you know what i mean our history europe over there yeah. something i mean but yo, this was super dope. Um, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, you know, come come shop. You know, our history right here. Oh, hype said he's been showing love forever. Right, we. You, hype said he's been showing love forever for years. Definitely, definitely. And yo, you made my first hoodie, so. You know, I always show love, you know, so I appreciate that. I did that. not know that. Yeah, you made my first ever hoodies, the Hype City <laughs> joints. I remember down in the little basement shit down there, you know what I mean? But, um, 
Thank you. And hold up before I get out of here. And we had a cipher here. Like, y'all remember that, yeah, right? Yeah, so the thing is, we, we were like, we were the first store that had the Philly Hip Hop Award cipher in. And then after that, we did ciphers all, all the, the time. All the time, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. So, you know. But um, thank you very much. You already know what it is. For myself, Jersey Gliss, JP, Art History, we out of here. Peace.